Good evening and welcome to the Bench Jewelers Workshop. Tonight we're going to be looking at uh, a few things uh, in the uh, line of making jewelry and designing it. Now here is a little cut out out of piece of paper and it is just uh, a leaf form and uh, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the feather in uh, the first uh, lesson. Uh, which was 01 and 01B. Now, a couple of things here. First of all, there are a number of ways you can transpose your your uh, design to your silver or your copper. Now tonight we're going to be using copper, or we can use silver, but to, to save money and uh, to give you practice if you decide to take on the uh, jewelry designing and, and uh, sale of, uh, of uh, jewelry, uh, probably better for you to work in copper before you move on to uh, silver. Uh, now to transpose, like I said, uh, to your, uh, your part to your, to your metal, uh, the first thing you want to do is kind of design that, the part in, in paper or some sort of tracing paper and then you can uh, transfer that onto your uh, metal. Now I used uh, in the first series on the 01 I showed you how to just use uh, uh, CA glue, just thick CA glue which is right here and I like that because you're able to uh, most, not always, but most times you can just peel the little piece right back off which this was the feather that we, the feather we made on the first uh, lesson and uh, we'll, we'll just call it lesson one from now on until we get going here a little bit more. So lesson two here is a, a little bit more about how to do these things. Now this will be glued but you can see I can remove it and then I can make another one and two or three more before that wears out. As a matter of fact we made uh, I think about three or four of these. So and you can always put those in your little uh, folder and uh, come back to them later on especially if you find a, a piece that really sells well for you. Uh, let's go on with a little bit more here. So transferring it, there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, you can use double sided, uh, I'm using double sided tape and this is carpet tape. So I just put it on and then you just peel off the uh, piece here. And now you have a sticky substance there. So the, I don't like this method very well because what happens is your blade gums up and it, and it uh, tends to stick on you but we'll try it tonight so we're going to place this just about perfect in here so that we can saw this out and let's see let's go down here and start right in here so I'm just going to put that down there just like that now we should be able to peel that back off if we don't tear it all up trying to saw it out but uh, Anyway, uh, now this leaf, to, to go on with this just a little bit, uh, the designs that I'm giving you right now in first few lessons are how to texture your, your pieces. And if you stick with me on this, I think you're going to find these will instantly sell for you on uh, the different places that you can sell it. And we've gone through that, Facebook and Etsy. Uh, Pine Tree, Pen Tree, is it? And uh, eBay, and, and there's just a number of them. And if you want to look around, you'll you'll find them. But you can do the uh, Facebook exchange, you know, and probably sell them there too. Uh, people will buy this stuff, believe me. So I'm giving you the, the items that are the hottest that I think uh, to get you started. So when you start buying your tools, uh, you can... Uh, get them paid back by by selling your jewelry on uh, different uh, sites and so well it's very expensive to start so we're trying to start you out very slow and very simple with uh, a minimum amount of tools and uh, we'll go on from there now in the first uh, lessons here I showed you how to use either a uh, diamond, this is a uh, V uh, graver, and then we also used a uh, square graver, a flat flat square graver like this one here. 
and uh, this was the one we I think this is one we ended up using for the whole thing so tonight we've come up with a new one for you and now this is a half round graver and if you'll take a look at the back side you can see that it's round and it's sharpened at about 50 degrees and then mirror sharpened and uh, it's a little harder to use uh, until you get used to it but uh, I think it actually makes your cuts a little easier for you once you get get the hang of things so we'll uh, we'll give it a try tonight and uh, we'll uh, I think we're going to make about uh, two other sizes so you'll have a total of three different sizes you can buy here and uh, I think you'll enjoy these because they, they really leave a nice pattern for you now what we're doing is similar to that of the Black Hills Gold Jewelry and I don't know whether all the states carry it but uh, all of the western states here uh, from uh, Branson, uh, Colorado, uh, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska all of them carry a, a pretty good size of uh, Black Hills Gold in the, in the uh, tourist uh, areas uh, Branson especially um, so the Black Hills Gold uh, sells well and it has been for uh, 60 70 years now uh, it started back in 1876 and uh, a gentleman uh, uh, S.T. Butler bought the uh, F, or started F.L. Thorpe uh, uh, Gold Factory and then uh, eventually that was bought out by Landstrom and now today the uh, Landstrom which has been around for 70 years has been uh, bought out by Riddles so you know it's just how how it goes you know for years and years uh, and then be sold out is kind of sad but uh, it, it was but now we cannot call uh, we're going to go on now we're, we can't call our jewelry Black Hills because it really isn't uh, the Black Hills Gold Jewelry was tricolored it had green yellow and uh, uh, copper looking uh, uh, gold pieces called the tri golds and they were mixed by different uh, formulas uh, some of it was silver and zinc and some of it was copper and then just plain gold and uh, that that's how uh, the colors were developed and they were done in by uh, Lebold uh, Lebeau I'm sorry they were done by Lebeau and uh, the, th the, the the legend goes that Lebeau was looking for gold in the uh, Black Hills and somewhere around the I'm guessing the the uh, Rapid City area or Deadwood or somewhere up in there he got lost and uh, when he took uh, a rest in the forest there trying to figure his way back to, to civilization he uh, fell asleep under a tree and this is just one of the ways a le legend goes when he woke up he seen uh, some grapes and uh, was able to eat those and uh, get enough energy so he could finally get himself back home he never did find gold <laughs> that's you know that, that'd be my luck too <laughs> but anyway he did develop uh, the the tri golds and uh, he uh, started building uh, jewelry and uh, he was teaching people how to do it and uh, the uh, uh, ST Butler who uh, actually put together the first factory and uh, uh, he had a son that uh, also helped and eventually uh, the company which was FL Thorpe as a manufacturer was uh, bought out by by Landstrom's so that's kinda how the the, the story went and uh, so they have been terribly popular <laughs> they've been very popular for for years and years so what I'm trying to teach you is how to do this texturing and how to put a combination of all oh, hundreds of leaves and feathers and all kinds of uh, ways to intertwine them and uh, those will all sell for you so that's the, uh, the idea here to try and teach you from the uh, 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 very beginning and get you uh, orientated on how to do that that kind of work now this was just a little feather I made out of uh, out of uh, copper and this is one of them that we uh, that was our first lesson right there and uh, this is the uh, exact duplicate of it 
so we had a right and left earring. So, and these are just little feathers. And they come out really pretty, and they do very well in, in silver. So, gold is pretty expensive to work with at uh, eighteen hundred and seventy dollars an ounce. So you want to might stay away from that for a while. So, uh, we've already gone through sewing and how to do sewing. We always want to take the jeweler's saw. The blades always want to, the teeth of the blade always want to come to the back. You just start it out with a little bit of wax. This is just jeweler's wax here. Jeweler's wax, and you just want to start it out like that. That gets you started. Now, like I said, I don't care for the, the double sided tapes, and there's other styles of, of double sided that would probably work better than what this stuff will do. But it is the way of doing it, and so we're going to just make a couple cuts, and we just start right here. And you can see how easy I, I'm just gently doing the fault sawing. I'm going to move it in here a little bit. So now I'm not going to take you all the way through this, but I'm going to just cut off. Now when I'm going to start again here, I'm going to go ahead and use some uh, wax again uh, to just uh, coat the blade and we'll keep going until we saw this out. So I'll come back to you when we get this sawed out. Okay, welcome back and uh, I went ahead and sawed this out because you know, you've know you already seen it in, in lesson one. So we're going to do some other styles of saws, sawing uh, later on which uh, we'll be doing some piercing where we drill holes and cut things out from the inside out and uh, that will be fun too. Right now we're just trying to, to get you a, a foundation so that you can uh, start learning how to do the the uh, texturing on your uh, jewelry. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, if we keep following the lines of the Black Hills and make that kind of jewelry it will sell fast for you and uh, people will enjoy it for years to come and uh, that will help you pay for your tools and your education with me. So we'll just continue now. Now I used uh, the double sided tape. I didn't like it. I uh, probably wouldn't use this style of tape again so I wasted four dollars. <laughs> I think it was four uh, on tape. Yeah. I bought carpet tape and uh, that wasn't the thing to, to, to try. I didn't realize that it was a glue underneath of it. Uh, I, uh, there is uh, another type of do double sided tape where it's it's uh, uh, a little different uh, than uh, a sticky glue. Uh, I'll look for it at the next time I go to Menards or Home Depot. So, if this didn't work very well, I would have rather used uh, uh, CA glue, just glued it down. But uh, still, we we can survive here with the. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really hard to get that off of there without ruining it. But we might be able to do that. This would not do that again. Uh, that was the wrong stuff to use. Uh, anytime you use a, a transfer tape or a double sided tape, you're probably going to lose the, the uh, design. And uh, you'll have to then use the copper piece or your or silver piece to uh, continue with the next one. And you can do it the same way. You can glue this this actual metal to another piece of, uh, or back onto another sh uh, piece of your metal, and then just saw it out again. But you risk, you know, changing the design. And we're trying to always keep our little design so we can build a little folder full of them, and then you can always revert back to them, especially if you find one that sells well, and you will. So this is really difficult to get off of here, but ah, come off. So we might be able to save that. But now you got all this glue on here that you got to get rid of too. So well, I guess it comes off fairly easy. I really don't like it though. I I'm I kind of have a stickler for CA glue, and I wanted to glue parts down. Uh, I've even used them on my milling machine. Uh, glued stuff down in it, managed to hold 
while we were cutting the pieces out. So, all right, we got rid of that. Now, the, the next thing to do is to take your needle files and uh, the first lesson. I listed them on the first lesson, so we can. Uh, Go into uh, mybenchjeweler.com and I'll list uh, the website in the comments down below. Uh, and you can buy these. Uh, that's a set of three for $39, I believe. You get three handles and 12, 12 needle files, of which the three handles come in handy because you'll have about three uh, files out of the 12 that you'll really use all the time. And one of them would be a Barrett file, and then a round file, and a flat file. Uh, half round quite a bit too so but it gives you a nice little start and the handles are big yeah, you don't want to use these little handles like this this is just terribly hard to use like that you just don't have any control but when you start when you put them in a uh, handle like this it uh, really gives you a nice handle and this is about three and three eighths of an inch handle about 370 I think is what these come out to so anyway, uh, you can look them up if you want on our website and uh, buy a set and you'll probably enjoy the set for years to come as long as you're using them for uh, gold and silver, copper, brass, things like that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them in uh, steel because you'll ruin the teeth of the file, the grit of it. But anyway, so let's move on and I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. I want the edge of this to look round. See if you can get my little fingers out of there. All I'm doing is just getting all the rough edges off of this. And these are so nice to, to, to use, these files. Just wonderful. So, I'll get this uh, finished up and cleaned off and uh, we'll use a, a, a gray disc uh, which looks similar like this here. Uh, a brand new one that uh, looks a little bit longer and a little more flat. And uh, I'll get to that here in a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and get this all cleaned up for you. And then we'll go to the next stage again and uh, move onward. So, just uh, stay with me here and uh, we'll be right back. Uh, I kind of cleaned it up a little bit and uh, as you well know that nature doesn't always have things perfectly in line uh, so this leaf doesn't look exactly the same as on one side as the other uh, some leaves do by the way but uh, we're not doing it tonight because this is how I made this one so these are the the wheels I love using these are kind of a gray uh, cutting wheel and uh, I uh, polished this just a little bit with the pink wheel and that's this one here and this it's kind of black now but it is a, a pink wheel and uh, it does it's it's so fine that it actually polishes but uh, we could do another way we could drill the hole here and then we could use a little wire and we could buff it out with with buffing wheels we'll get into that later too but right now for for just practical purposes we uh, buffed it up a little bit because we're going to texture this and uh, just giving it a nice little shine like it is now is all we really need. So the next thing we have to do is uh, either put it in a uh, engraving ball or we can uh, use my little device here that we make. These are little uh, shellac pin uh, clamp vices and uh, we just heat this a little bit and drop it in there. and that will uh, hold it while we do all of our decorations and we can even drill the little hole here for the leaf uh, like I said you could drill the hole prior to that or put it in your slack pin and drill the hole and then take it back out and polish it up really nice and then go back and do your your uh, texturing but uh, this we're going to probably use as a uh, drop earring you know with a wire hoop and uh, 
just like the uh, little uh, feather ones that I showed you here earlier. I'll reach in here and grab one. We'll probably uh, we'll probably use these little ear, uh, wire hoops like this here. I like those. And uh, even in copper, uh, I think that these would sell very well for 15, 18 bucks a set. Uh, maybe 20. <laughs> Whatever you think you can get out of them, go for it. So now to do this, uh, you have to have a little torch. Uh, I think I have about five or six left in the uh, website. They're about 22 or 23 dollars plus shipping, and uh, you're you're going to have to own one of these little torches right here like this. But for right now, we just we just touch this a little bit, and we drop it right in there. And you don't want much heat; just just enough. To drop it in there and melt it into the to the uh, shellac, and then uh, you're ready to start doing your your work on it. And these are beautiful little uh, uh, little vices. Uh, I call them shellac pin vice, <laughs> and, and they're just just a little way of clamping your your piece in there. So now, like I said, we uh, we actually changed a little bit. Uh, this is the round graver. And uh, I think to start with, you should probably get one really narrow, so that there's very little blade cutting. Uh, I think I can master this one pretty easy. I haven't used it too much yet, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see. So one of the first things you want to do is you want to put your decoration on here uh, before you put the veins in. Now this is a flat blade, and it can also make the the veins, but we're just going to use it to. And we're just going to go, actually we're just going to go straight like this. See how I did that? I just wiggle it back and forth. And the faster you go, the tighter that, uh, that little pattern gets. Now you can uh, also go right back over it again. You can see how I'm getting the pattern in there. And we could have used a wider blade. Uh, this is about a two millimeter blade and we could have used a three. Just back and forth, twisting it back and forth with a little forward pressure, but not very much. And you have to keep it up in the air quite a bit. This is a wriggling cutting. I think we just about got that done in the uh, this little design. You can also come over here and make little cuts in there, but I think we'll just leave it the way it is for now. Got one little piece right here I need to pick up. There we go. Now that's done. So we'll come back in here and we'll give it a try. Now, we're not going to try and cut a big wide path through there. So we're going to take this scraper and we're just going to roll it on its side a little bit. And we'll give it a little try. So we're going to put our vein in. Okay. Now we're going to just go up in the air just a little bit and at an angle. See how I just pushed in and chipped out. Let's see if we can get a little closer. We'll do the other side. And you're going to see that when you do this, no, uh, no two patterns are going to be exactly the same. So we're just knocking off the chips.
and I think we've got a pretty nice little pattern here. You see how bright that looks? They're just gorgeous. And uh, these will sell. Uh, I think you'll you'll find that all the tools you buy through us are you can go hunt for them uh, uh, in supply houses and stuff. I think they're probably av available. But what's really nice, what I'm teaching you, pretty much I carry all of this stuff in stock. So uh, a, a set of two gravers is with uh, two blades. Uh, I think it's about sixty dollars, right in that area. But uh, two or three pieces of jewelry and you've got your sixty dollars kicked back so so the last thing we want to probably do here is we probably want to go ahead and put a little hole through there so we can finish this up and uh, I think I showed you how we did that the last time uh, there's a number of ways to do it but first of all you really want to get a, uh, a little bit of a, a start in there so we're gonna take our hammer and we're going to put a little dimple right in the middle here and down just a little ways now there's just a little uh, center punch there and uh, now we're going to choose a drill bit I think this one will be about right this is uh, let me see what size that bit is it is a 0.010. Well, pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> oh, I lost my feather. My, I'm sorry. We will cut that piece out. <laughs> take take five. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I should leave that in. It was kind of funny. Maybe I will. Uh, I gotta reheat this just for a second. Uh, I boo booed here. All right. One, two, three. Three seconds. Well, not even three seconds, about one tenth of a second there. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can finish this little leaf up. <laughs> I'm getting confused here. I do saw a little hand drill that has a little, it's a little spiral drill and you can actually drill with that. I might show that on the next video. But for right now we'll just go ahead and take this drill bit. And we've made a little place to put our uh, wire, ear wire. And uh, we'll just do a little cleanup on this on the uh, outside edges a little bit. Polish up the back side. Uh, you always want to polish your back too. Don't leave it uh, uh, un unpolished. Always kind of make your jewelry uh, finished uh, both sides if it's possible. So, all right. So... Set our drills back down. Now to get these out of here, uh, anything will work as long as it's a sharp edge. And we just go right in here like this. You see how easy that comes out of your... And you can always buy a little bottle of shellac, but this will last a long, long time. So, uh, see, we got heated it just a little too much so maybe it's just two swipes there yeah and we just go ahead and take that and heat that too much you don't want to burn it but see we kind of covered our shellac pin back up and uh, you have a 
little until uh, exacto knife or something like that you can just peel the rest of this right off of there be careful you don't cut yourself that has happened Okay, now like I said, we, we want to finish the back side a little bit, so to do that we'll use uh, these little gray wheels. This one's almost spent, but uh, you want to keep these for inside of your ring shanks and stuff like that when we get to those, those kind of lessons. Uh, this is a wonderful little lesson, and uh, I re I'm sorry. I recommend that you go ahead and buy a little copper sheet from us. Uh, it's this long, but it makes a number of uh, pieces. And uh, see how well your copper comes out before you start buying a, a silver sheet. And uh, we also sell s silver sheet. It uh, varies in price during to, depending on what the stock market does with the uh, cost of it. Right now, silver is running about $25, $30 an ounce. When I started this business, it was three dollars an ounce, and uh, when we kind of started tapering off and slowing down, it was about eight dollars an ounce total ounce. And an ounce is thirty-one point one zero three uh, grams. So, all right. So, for all practical purposes, this one's finished, and all we got to do is put an ear wire on it. This is six by one inch wide, and I believe these are about 24 gauge. Uh, it's not real heavy, it's not real real thick, so it's easier to saw through. Once again, I don't like this. I like using the uh, CA glue. I, I think it uh, it's easier to get it off of there most of the time, and uh, it doesn't cost much. Uh, it's, so your your filings and everything are collected out of this glue and it's kind of a mess. So we'll try a different uh, uh, double sided tape. Uh, maybe I, if I can get over to one of the main warehouse or hardware stores we can pick up a, a different style of, uh, of uh, hardware or double sided tape. Uh, so now we have a couple little things to do here. Uh, these are, we buy these by the hundreds. And uh, so we can sell you like six of them at a time. These are actually sterling silver. I, I prefer using sterling silver, and they're usually rhodium plated, so they'll last quite a long time before they tarnish. Uh, but you can easily clean those. Uh, I don't know the exact price, but they'll be listed in the uh, on the website at myadventurejeweler.com. So, but before we finish up here, we got to do just one little thing. We're going to use our little dapping block. And these are on our website. They're very inexpensive, and they don't damage the uh, your uh, jewelry piece because they're wood. So you can actually take take and use these. Uh, you should have them on a kind of a solid surface. Probably would be better if I had them up a little further. But you just take your little hammer and your little bitty uh, puncher, your wood one. It's not going to mar the the uh, back of your uh, piece of jewelry, so it's it's kind of a last step as long as you're using a wood dap. Now the metal ones, which we carry them, uh, or I use them, uh, they they will damage this. So you would have to do your curving first, and then it makes it harder to do your texturing. But uh, now we can go ahead and uh, see. We I think I opened one of these up with just a pair of tweezers. Uh, there's just a few things you gotta have to really do the job right. But some visors if you're old and you can't see. <laughs> Alright. So now to, to kind of finish our, our put a finishing touch on this, we just come in here, hopefully. Well, maybe. I 
that. And we want to close, close the uh, ring back up so it's nice and tight. Okay. As you can see, I'll bring the... Oh, I'm sorry. There we go. Now you can see that it's nice and tight in there. And there's no gap so the, the little earring won't fall off. And uh, you can see now that's a, a pretty nice little set. So we'll make another one and we'll have a pair. And uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, lesson. Uh, this is uh, lesson 10102. And it was a lesson started and completed. So there won't be a, a B to this. So we'll see you on lesson uh, 10103. 003, and uh, that will be here shortly. I, I try to at least get one or two uh, videos out every week. Uh, last Friday and then this Friday we got this one out. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the lessons. And uh, keep on trucking. And uh, if you're at home and you're... Uh, working out of your house, just remember that uh, whether you're uh, old or young or uh, inter intermediate age and you're, you want to learn this, this business, it's a, it's a wonderful sideline and it's a wonderful retirement. So.